Good afternoon and welcome to our last meeting in May. I uh, appreciate everybody in our council chambers and those of you who are watching us on our Electric City television. Our respects to the flags will be laid by Councilman Don Chapman. The invocation will be laid by Councilman John Roberts. Please rise. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight to ask your blessings on this council and administration as we set forth policies and procedures for the betterment of our city. Please, Lord, guide our thoughts and decisions in a way that would be for your good and the good of our citizens. As always, we ask your continued blessings and constant watch over our law enforcement, fire department, and first responders as they selflessly place themselves in harm's way for our protection. Lastly, please bless of America that we are forever grateful and blessed to call home. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The minutes of our April 24th meeting have been distributed. Are there any corrections or additions to the minutes? Not hearing any, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Our first by Mr. Stewart, second by Mr. Buck Roberts. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The minutes of April 24th pass unanimously. We don't have any old business, so we'll dive directly into our new business. The first item of new business is request consideration of referral to the Planning Commission a petition to rezone 402 Boulevard from R15 single family residential to RM18 multifamily residential and 303 Boulevard and 2000 Williamston Road from limited office, LO limited office to RM18 multifamily residential. Ms. McCall. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Council, all three of these properties are um, being asked for rezoning by Anderson University and they're in the Anderson University's ownership. As you know, a referral to the Planning Commission simply starts your process uh, by going before the uh, Planning Commission to hear all of the details about what the permitted uses are, what the um, expected uses would be in the um, whole plan of the university campus. So with these three properties, what the request that is before you 402 Boulevard is a single family dwelling which has been acquired by the university. 303 Boulevard is, you would better know it as what used to be the pure oil, oil station, station and later a beauty <coughs> salon. That is um, a very small piece of property. And the 200 Williamston Road is currently in use for the Anderson University I believe it's for, for their um, evening admissions office, but it's an office, um, university office related uses. Um, for the, um, from the staff standpoint, part of the reason for looking at all of these properties with the university at the same time is to um, bring a sense of consistency for all of the university properties and pretty much bringing them all under the um, RM18 um, zoning category, which is uh, what the bulk of the college is zoned for. So again, all this does really is refer it to the Planning Commission and they would hear it at their June the 6th meeting. So after the Planning Commission hears it, other, other details would be available as to these particular properties and their uses. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to. I'll make a motion we refer to the planning commission. No, this first. This is in my seat. Yes, sir. Second. Uh, first by Mr. Buck Roberts, the second by Mr. Lockridge. Further discussion? I have one question. If this is approved, um, I guess the buffering would relate to the new zoning requirements? Yes, anything that they get ready to do that is. Um, Construction related on, on the, the interior, certainly if they do anything, would go before the um, um, 
planning and building departments for review, if they get ready to plan any exterior changes to the properties, obviously there's the Board of Architectural Review that would have some uh, role in it. So at this point, this is purely zoning. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. Uh, Oppose. That's a public meeting on June the 6th. It passes unanimously to the Planning Commission. Our next item is request consideration to purchase tasers for the police department. Ms. McCall. Uh, yes, sir. This is about um, a request to purchase 50 tas tasers, and I'd like to ask Chief Stewart if he would come up and share the details of this proposal with us. Uh, thank you. Um, we were at last able to purchase tasers in 2008. This was an SCDPS award that provided us about 50 to 53 tasers. Uh, the tasers we have currently are aging. Um, we're replacing those at a rate of um, 5 to 10 per year. And as we send those back to the Taser Corporation, they are uh, recommending, in fact, the X26 model that we have, they are no longer making that one. They recommend that we were replacing those with a new taser. And you're talking about a cost of about $1,500 um, per taser. Uh, we, what we looked at was uh, several different plans. Um, the least plan that was presented was the best. Um, we could see uh, using that along with the Municipal Association rebate <coughs> risk management um, fund that they have that we'll apply for to lower that cost. But this will provide us with 50 tasers um, that are immediately in need right now at PD. We have about 35 tasers that are down, uh, not in use at this time. And that's leaving us basically with about around 40 to 45 tasers for uh, uniform personnel. Uh, this plan, um, utilizing the lease program and then uh, partnering with the Municipal Association with the risk management was a good cost. And it looked to, uh, the lease program was better than outright buying and saving the uh, city uh, more money. Thank you. Any questions for the chief? I have one. How long do those tasers uh, uh, last, chief? Well, it, it all depends on the officer and how what, how much it's used and the durability of it. Uh, we still have some that are in good shape from 2008, but again, like I said, those models are not even being manufactured anymore. I would say 10 years. Um, this is a five-year lease. Uh, it, we make our uh, first purchase with these. They are actually city property. We're just making the payments on them. Um, you know, there, there is some benefits for the lease program rather than out buying them and just share that with you. It's a 25% cost savings. Um, in other words, the price won't go up next year or the next five years. We're locked in at this price right now. So if Taser decides they, which they are their own unique um, weapon, there there is no competitor for them out in the market. Um, it locks in the price and you can only trade in Taser. So this year, um, with this program, you're getting a five thousand dollar cash trade-in for the thirty-five trade tasers that are not valid, not operable anymore. So we're able to trade those in. If you're just buying them strictly from the manufacturer. You're not allowed to do a trade-in. It has to be through the lease program. Ms. Stewart and then Ms. Thompson. Well, I was just going to say I spoke with the chief, and I think another good thing about the lease program, we're talking with the chief, is that. Uh, if we bought them, they only have a one-year warranty. If the officer drops them, then it's up to us. And I think the chief said sometimes the bill is nine hundred thousand dollars to repair them under the lease program for the next five years. If one breaks, we send it back in. They replace it free. Mm -hmm. So uh, <coughs> yeah. I think it's yeah. great. Doctor Thomas, I was going to ask if all the officers have check tasers. Do right. think all officers need tasers? All the ones right now that are uniform personnel, with exception maybe five officers have a taser. Uh, we also need the additional ones for our dogs, too. Ms. Chapman? Are you saying there's only one manufacturer that produces the taser itself? Yeah, they hold the exclusive so uh, rights to that product. And when does that end, just out of curiosity? Uh, I can't answer that. We had another competitor, and it was called Stinger, and it was um, manufactured, and it was actually considered a firearm because it worked with gunpowder. Um, taser successfully sued them and removed them from the market. It's just... That's, I think that's that's the thing that makes it unusual that the taser actually costs more than the <coughs> than the sidearm. Right. Mr. Harbin. So, how many tasers will this give us in inventory? 
If if we uh, purchase these, this will give us about 95 exactly. tasers. That may I make a motion to approve this? So first by Mayor Pro Tem, second by Mr. Chapman. For a discussion. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Our next item is request consideration to purchase two-way radios for the Public Works Division. They're pointing at each other. Ms. McCall? <laughs> well, as we, as we said, Mr. Mayor, we, we have lots of experts from our staff in the audience tonight who are assisting with some of these uh, more technical uh, items on the agenda. This particular one dealing with our two-way radios um, is for public works, and it also... It, uh, affects our recreation, parks and recreation division as well. And um, Adam Kerner is going, has done all, a lot of the research on this and is very familiar with our communications, uh, both in not just in stormwater public works as a whole, and also is in good communication um, daily with um, our parks and rec. So, Adam, would you come share the uh, purchase? of 32 two-way radios and the reprogramming of 60 two-way radios. We currently in Public Works and Parks and Recreation have 92 portable and mobile uh, two-way radios. Uh, several years ago, I think back in 2014, uh, we had some problems with our repeaters that were on the tower at the university and uh, council approved the purchase of new repeaters. Those new repeaters are capable of a digital format which would allow us uh, to double our channel capacity on the two-way radios to four channels and we'd also have some talk around channels we'll be able to use. The uh, increases the coverage of uh, how far out they can go up to 30 percent. As you know we have the uh, transit goes out Tri-County Tech so they're a good ways out of the city limits and that gives us a little bit more extended coverage to cover those areas. So this is for uh, 32 replacement radios and the reprogramming of 60 radios that we have now that are already in that digital format. So how many divisions, I guess, is public works, right, and transit, I guess? Well, and you know, in public works, you gotta remember who all is in public works. So you've got, you've got your fleet services, you've got cemetery, uh, engineering, sanitation, stormwater, street, transit, um, and then public works administration. So, and then of course uh, in parks and rec, you've got your beautification as well as um, downtown and then the people in park maintenance, yes. So in essence, from a communication piece, it allows everybody to communicate. It allows everybody to talk to everybody. The other, one other thing, um, Adam, you might want to mention is that it, for any existing analog radios, uh, we will have the ability to program those for internal use. So if the folks in the cemetery needed to talk to folks in another part of the cemetery, they would have that um, capability. So it gives us the, it, both of these things really give us the ability to communicate within ourselves and among ourselves in the a, more in an efficient way using the digital um, format, which gives us the extra ability, the channels, additional channels that Adam mentioned, as well as increasing our coverage. Right. Of course, Ms. Lockridge. Uh, of the 60 that you're going to have reprogrammed, are they in pretty good shape? They are. Since 2014, when we got the new repeaters, we started replacing radios as we got new equipment, and we've re replaced about uh, that many radios. Can we our job? Yes. Second. Now first, I have a second, Mr. Stewart. Uh, Adam, uh, Broadway Technologies, who's got the low bid, what has been there? You know, who have we been using, and um, are, are they new to us? Are they new to uh, municipalities or? Tell us a little bit about Broadway Technologies. Broadway Technologies is out of uh, Pelzer, just on the other side of the Anderson County line in Greenville. Uh, they've recently relocated to Williamston. They have been servicing our equipment since we installed the repeaters. They were the vendor that uh, we purchased the repeaters from, and they installed those, and they've been maintaining our equipment right, since then. And 
CSC, who's out of Greenville, they provided the other bid and uh, they're just a little bit higher. All right, thank you. Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> so how small will these radios uh, transmit? On the repeater channel, they'll transmit um, into Greenville County. We have pretty good range on them. So it'll cover, obviously, our whole city it plus does. where we run the bus routes. And do we, how, is there a bank that they put them back in and at night to charge them or at the public works? They are. Each department has their own uh, bank of radios and they charge them. And I assume they use these like for other special events and they get used a good bit. They do. Okay. And do you know what brand? I didn't see. It's Motorola. Motorola. That's what I picture. Any other questions? All those in favor, sir? Aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you. Our next item is request consideration of a demolition contract for the rec center. Ms. McCall. Um, as you all know, we've been, um, the rice center building itself has been before you uh, recently in March where we approved Eastern Environmental to do the asbestos abatement. Uh, we are nearly finished with that um, abatement process. We'd expect that to, um, unless something unforeseen occurs, we would expect that to be completed this week. And um, the, we did take bids for the actual demolition and had five companies that bid on the demolition. Now the demolition project itself includes not only the um, demolition of the building itself, but it includes um, re removing the foundations, the disconnection and removal of all the utilities, removal of the debris from the site, and, and making sure that it is graded and then backfilled in that uh, building footprint area so that once we're done, we have a um, site that can be, uh, in addition, be hydro seeded and stabilized so that we can use it properly in the future. Plus, it looks, it will look good when it's finished. I mean, it won't be a, um, a, a site with a lot of um, building debris or, or foundation pieces remaining on it. Out of the five bids that we received, the low bid was from Miller Construction out of Anderson for $72,157. Uh, Four Seasons Site and Demo out of Wilmington for $88,000. Earth Materials and Grading out of Belton for $89,700. Complete Demolition Services out of Carrollton, Georgia for $222,000 and Glenn Constructors out of Anderson for 222960 And as you know, this certainly has been part of our conversation, ongoing conversation, as we talked about um, neighborhoods and our recreation master plan in terms of trying to put that property back into productive use. This would be considered um, step one in terms of since we do have a vacant building down there, we don't want a vacant building to um, become a liability for a neighborhood. And we did have the city engineer assist us with the bid process and review the bid documents. And the staff recommends awarding the demolition of the Rice Center building to Miller Construction in the amount of $72,157. Now, of course, we've had experience with um, Miller Construction as well, too. So not, they're not foreign to us in terms of uh, doing business in Anderson. Thank you. Any questions, guys? Comments? Just have one comment. Um, uh, Bobby, I just, you know, I know over at the Jim Rice Center in the back, I don't know exactly when the demolition is going to take place, but, you know, in the past years, we've had special needs come over there to use the ball fields to practice, and I don't know if they've made plans this year or not, but we just want to make sure that those things coincide, because I know they have used the field a lot to, for their youth during the summer for you know, the special needs population. Uh, how, we, how long would it take to... We, uh, based upon our conversation with Miller, they would expect to begin um, after Memorial Day, so the first week in June, and said that it would be a short-term project for them. They could complete it in um, probably about 10 days or less. All right, thank you. Ms. Chairman? 
Um, I have a couple, but um, one, I guess, uh, previous projects that we've had demolition done, Phillips Recovery, uh, I guess, it submitted to us. It was a little surprising that they weren't on here, but Miller has done a variety of projects throughout Anderson. Um, the only thing that I would want to make sure, because of what Mr. Stewart said, and and also for for grass cutting, is to make sure it, it's it's confirmed that it is a clear site with no masonry bits and debris, so that when it is grassed over and if it's being cut, nothing's being thrown, or and if kids are playing on it, it'll be a nice, uh, clean turf. <clears throat> we agree. Dr. Thomas. Look at the differences in these ideas. All the way from 72,000 to 222,000. Mm -hmm. What in the world? <laughs> Maybe they want to work. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody would want to see it. <laughs> Chris. Okay. Uh, you're not that much. <laughs> they were all the same packages. Uh, well, the companies were busier than those. Well, I know we appreciate that 72,000 bid, <laughs> but it's one that who in the world would bid 222,000 for the same job. Well, well, I know one of the companies I talked to said that they only had one dump truck. They would have to rent dump trucks and that, and I think that was added to the cost to that, plus landfill cost and some of those kind of things. So I know one didn't have all the equipment that they needed to have to really do the process. And Dr. Thompson, you know, we we do um, try to do some in-house estimates so that we have a feel for whether the prices in the ballpark and certainly uh, the low bid fits what we believe is a reasonable price. Okay. Anything else, guys? With that, I would make a motion we accept it as proposed. Uh, first by Mr. Chapman, second by Mr. Buck Roberts for a discussion. All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? That passes unanimously. The next two items have to do with my favorite agency, the federal government, the EPA. The first one is request consideration of a contract for wastewater collections and transmission systems assessment program. Mr. McCall. Yes, and Mr. Mayor, we're going to call upon Jeff Caldwell our utilities director to help us understand all of the ins and outs of this um, assessment that we do in terms of going in and actually looking at the lines and determining their condition and a lot of other information. Jim? Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Ms. McConnell. Um, Mayor and Council, as the item states, we are requesting your consideration to uh, award a contract for wastewater collection and transmission assessment uh, services to hydro structures. Uh, as you probably all recall, in 2014, we started our developing and implementing of our 10 programs to comply with EPA's administrative order on consent. And the main goal there was to eliminate sanitary sewer overflows within the collection system. Um, to successfully co implement that continuing sewer, it's a continuing sewer assessment, not comprehensive sewer assessment. Continuing sewer assessment program, the city is required to assess 10% of the, assess 10 of the system each year. That equates to about 27 miles of line each year and over 600 manholes. Um, project includes a lot of camera work, um, coding uh, according to our industry standards, and any bypass uh, pumping that may be required. Uh, all of this will take place in what we're calling the Lower Whitner Creek Subbasin. The Whitner Creek Subbasin basically runs from 28 Bypass and um, Murray. And what do you call it, Jeff? The what system? The Wait, Lower no. Whitner Creek Subbasin. Okay. And then runs up toward the, uh, the former Anderson Country Club and then on up into Lindley Park. This is for that lower half that generally is bordered on the north side by um, Whitner or Market Street in that area. Uh, on, on April 11th, we advertised for bids. We had five bidders who were interested. Uh, on April 25th, we received those bids from two companies. Both were experienced in performing the field services uh, required by the contract. The low bidder uh, was hydro, uh, hydro Structures at $391,682.50. Uh, Red Zone Robotics was very competitive at three three ninety nine three hundred three. dollars um, I'd like to say this, um, this will allow us to meet our, the requirements of that uh, continuing sewer assessment program. Also comply with that EPA consent order. Um, the results of what we will get will feed directly into another program called our Infrastructure Rehabilitation Program. 
that helps us prioritize the areas that are for our future capital improvements. Um, what's noteworthy about that is it kind of allows us to appropriately use our resources more wisely, targeting the areas that are, that are in bad condition, um, not as a whole, but maybe individually as needed. They may need point repairs along the way, also um, in an emergency situation if they are found. Um, funding will be through our sewer administration budget and our EPA uh, consent order line item. Um, in addition to this program, we did hire a um, crew leader that was responsible for our gravity sewer maintenance program. Uh, that is another one of those 10 programs is our gravity sewer maintenance program. Um, they will be able to assist our contractor daily with any issues they have, uh, locations of manholes, access to lines that may be on private property within our right of ways. Uh, and also coordinating any repair, emergency repairs that are found. Um, so based on based on the bids that we received, the qualifications, experience, and all our reference checks, we are uh, recommending awarding the contract to Hydrostructures in that amount of three hundred ninety-one thousand six hundred eighty-two dollars and fifty cents. Thank you, sir. Ms. Ms. Stewart and then Ms. Chapman. Uh, Jeff, so uh, in order to meet our EPA consent requirements you know, for that order, so I guess since we're having to assess about 10 percent of the sewer lines each year this is a cost that about somewhere in this ballpark that we're looking at for here on out or how long does that consent order is it forever does it have a cap on it or what the consent order will be finalized um somewhere in the next year but that continuing sewer assessment does continue and it is expected to continue 10 percent per year from here on out from here on out mm -hmm. so we might as well just put this in the budget just about every year and, and, it, and it is in the budget yeah, it is. Is in the yeah. so we we did uh we did anticipate this in the budget it is within our uh, original cost estimates i think we were in the neighborhood of about four hundred and fifty thousand in our um, cost estimates so it is under that and we were actually carrying about five hundred thousand <coughs> contingencies thank you mr chairman uh jeff can you remind the council and the viewing public how much the federal government was going to fine us if we did not fulfill their requirements per day um per day wasn't it something five thousand like a day two thousand a day something like that it was it was a hefty fine per day um and some of the fines that we had seen just up front just based on their um their coming in and assessing other systems were very hefty in the close to a million dollars yeah <coughs> far exceeding what we're having to spend is what i remember yes that it was it may have been ten thousand dollars a day if we yeah i think that's good yeah i think i think that's so, it yeah you know un unfortunately because of that and the fines that are assessed that there's nothing we can do about it and the ongoing cost but you know i'd recommend we would uh approve this as uh proposed i'll Over take that as a motion for yep. hydrostructures pa first on mr chapman second Second by Mr. Lockert. Further discussion? I have one question. Question? Who chooses the area to be inspected? We, uh, during our mapping program and during this continuing assessment program, we were, um, we were, part of that program was to, to give them our prioritization of which Crazy. basins were, were worst uh -huh. to best. So we have 10 basins and the Whitner Creek Basin was rated number one is based on historic for a long time. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Mandate, right? That's right. Right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. I would I would want to comment that you know a lot of people ask why the sewer bill is becoming more than the water bill, and that's your reason. And it does take more to treat the water after it's used than before. We have, we have a very very good source in Lake Hartwell, which allows us um, some um, lower cost treatment. Mm -hmm. You do want to clean water, you know. Oh, certainly. I, I don't have any. I, I definitely would agree with that. Our last item of new business is request consideration of a contract for sanitary sewer <coughs> flow monitoring services. Ms. McCall. This particular request, Jeff's going to help us with this as well, but this is um i guess it's appropriate considering the rains that we've had over the weekend um in that this is 
addressing the amount of our capacity within those pipes and it takes into consideration an assessment with those rain events and I, I would remind you too that with the EPA consent order or consent agreement um, that whole process those 10 things that we're required to do mandated to do means that we're not just in some proactive mode anymore we're in a, a predict what DHEC and EPA call a predictive mode so all of this is upfront study assessment analysis to determine what your system can do what its limitations are and what you're going to do to address it so Jeff help us understand the flow monitoring. Yes, Before Jeff starts, can yes, I ask Jeff to do one little thing for me? Yes, ma'am. Slow down just a little I'm bit. I'm sorry. Okay. S slow down. <laughs> All right. Slow down. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, you're living in the South. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I, will, I will do my best. I, I'm okay. sorry. Um, <laughs> but a lot of the background of this uh, item is the same. A lot of the same CMON programs, the EPA mandates. Uh, but this one is also related to the other where the other item was addressing infrastructure from a um, structural and, and um, deficiency standpoint from structural um, deficiencies. But this one is also from a capacity deficiency. Uh, the flow monitoring will allow us to address or look at our existing flows and be able to tell what excess capacity we have in those lines for future development. So we'll be able to prioritize our, some of our improvements based on how much excess capacity is in the line, um, where it may be located as far as an economic development standpoint, where we may need more um, and envision more flow in the future um, and, and things of that nature. Um, this ran the same timeline. Uh, we we uh, did a request for proposals. Uh, there was, because there are several different technologies that can be used to uh, measure flow. We wanted to make sure we were getting something that was going to be easily maintained, uh, would give us the results that we needed. Uh, on April 25th, we received proposals from three companies. Uh, all the companies were found to, to, um, to be able to provide the services. Uh, they were evaluated based on their pricing, their experience, uh, work history, their overall approach to the project delivery. Uh, ADES Environmental was the low bid, uh, and subsequently we uh, um, we were recommending approval of, that, of their uh, contract to them. Their bid was in the amount of $169,660. Again, the bids were fairly competitive with uh, Hawk was at a bid of $199,400. And Hydra Structures, which received the other contract, was a high bid at $298,800. Uh, includes uh, mobilization, the installation of eight flow monitoring stations. This is a um, contract that will be over three years, so we will pay up. We'll pay for our, the installation of the flow monitors, and then we'll pay over three-year time for the um, data services that come from those flow monitors. Uh, it does again meet the requirements of our sewer. This is called the Sewer Capacity Assurance Program, and it just assures that there's sufficient capacity in the lines to uh, treat future flows. Again, it will uh, comply with EPA, and also allow us to prioritize our future improvements. Uh, again, paid for by the same line item of our sewer administration budget uh, that's dedicated to EPA compliance and based on um, the proposals and the qualifications, uh, we are recommending award to ADS Environmental Services. Help us out on, um, give us a little crash course on, um, this actually is an economic development too. This is a positive is. thing. Definitely. So, because there's so many communities that, um, that Several that surround us are running out of capacity and goes to. So, how do we estimate how much capacity we have left in the system? Well, at these strategic locations, we'll have eight, eight locations. Uh, four of them are on the Genesee Creek trunk system side, the other four are on the Wacky River trunk system side, and they are located in a, in a way on our large mains in order to. It'll, these flow monitors will record, um, I think it's every second. They will record a data point every second. And it'll be able to they'll be able to look at fl uh, rain flow data, and as um, as that as those rain events come and flows increase, they'll be able to tell us uh, how much excess capacity is in those lines. Those lines, if they're a certain size and a certain slope, they have a maximum carrying capacity when they're running full. So if we had a manufacturer that came into town that used our water sewer system, we'd be able to tell them exactly how much capacity yes. we could have there. Yeah. 
and and it, as part of the program is EPA is requiring us to to look at that with every you can every every building project. Um, that's that's a, a big building project. It has to be I believe over 4,000 gallons a day of uh, flow, and it has to be a line. And we're looking at lines that are 12 inches and larger. Miss Chad, Jeff, does this uh, changing or modifying to prevent overflows? No. Okay, so so once they give us that data, um, then that's when we would implement concerned areas that we would yes. need to. But we would have to wait until there's the three years is up. Or well, we'll be getting data all along the way. Um, this in month, it's in monthly increments when the data will come in. Uh, we'll be able to use that to input into our hydraulic modeling software and tell us where we're at at that current level, at that current time. Okay. Yeah. Well based. The, the yeah, so we'll be able to get that. Yeah, uh, the capacity means the amount of flow that goes through those pipes. Yes. The capacity. So if each we didn't have capacity, a, would that call me a backup or something like yes. that? If as as a pipe reaches capacity, you, then you'll end up getting surcharges in the manholes, and eventually that leads to overflows out of manholes. Okay. Or no, or no new development. And then that leads to fines as well. Yes. Questions? Anything else? Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve this. First by the Mayor Pro Tem. Yes, sir. Second by Mr. Newton. Further discussion? <clears throat> All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. And you slow down this beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Minister Briefing, Ms. McConnell. We're reaching the end of the month of May. We have the Concerned Citizens of the East Side uh, meeting at 5 p.m. on the 25th at the Altern Alternative School and then the Southeast Anderson Task Force at 5.30 at the uh, Hannah West Side Career Campus. And please remember Memorial Day and um, we're grateful for um, those people, as Mr. Roberts said in his um, invocation who have given us the ability to celebrate Memorial Day. Our offices will be closed on Monday, May the 29th, and then that heads us into June. Thank you, ma'am. Before we go to our next item, I, would, I see um, a member of the chamber membership team, so I would think that she is here in regards to, tell us why you're here. And all you guys in class 33. Great. Appreciate you being there. Thank you for having us. Mr. Stewart. I'd just like to publicly uh, thank uh, Mr. Cecil Bonner, the principal at the uh, Career Campus, for allowing the Southeast Anderson Task Force to utilize the um, uh, cafeteria area for our uh, neighborhood meetings. Uh, Wanda Johnson and your staff over there is uh, very amenable to our needs and just love to know how much we appreciate them. We have one last item in executive session, legal advice, Ms. McCall. Uh, yes, sir. We would like to get some legal advice from our city attorney regarding a, a pending, well, an actual case that we have, the city of Anderson versus Neil Prince and Partners Architects. This has to do with the recreation center, and we would recommend um, going into executive session for that. We would not expect uh, any action coming out of that executive session. Session. Uh, first by Mr. Buck Roberts, second by Dr. Thompson. All those in favor say aye. Uh, opposed? We stand as a session. I do entertain a motion for my executive session. So I'll move. 
First, second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. We're out of executive session. In executive session, we heard a had a legal advice from our city attorney, Mr. McLean, and council advised him to um, go back to the, uh, the the legal team, the legal uh, Neil Prince and Partners. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. First by Mr. Lockett. Second. Second by Mr. Neal. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? We stand aside. Aye. 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 Aye.